What's your favorite Fallout? Is it the revolutionary Fallout 3? The expansive Fallout 4? Or perhaps the classic Fallout New Vegas? Now, I love them all. Each bringing something unique to the table. But, let's be honest. Fallout 76, let's just say it's better off as a vault tech experiment gone wrong. Today, we're diving deep into why Fallout New Vegas stands out as the best in the series. So grab your pit boys and your Sunset Sarsaparilla, because this is going to be one wild ride. The Mojave Wasteland is a character in itself. From the humble beginnings and good springs to the chaotic streets of Freeside, every location tells a story. Good Springs, with its tight-knit community, teaches us about the importance of cooperation and resilience. Meanwhile, Freeside, on the outskirts of the Strip, is a stark reminder of inequality and the struggle for survival. The New Vegas Strip stands as a beacon of hope and excess. Controlled by the enigmatic Mr. House, it's a place where fortunes are made and lost, and the line between luxury and squalor is razor thin. The contrast between the glittering casinos and the harsh desert outside highlights the game's underlying commentary on societal disparity. The struggle between freedom and control is embodied by the major factions. The NCR represents order and expansion, but with bureaucracy that can stifle progress. The presence in the Mojave is both a stabilizing force and a source of friction. Psychologically, they reflect our real-world tension between the desire for security and the frustration with overregulation. The Legion, on the other hand, offers a brutal yet effective form of order through fear and absolute authority. It's like choosing between a nagging mom who wants you home by nine and a strict dad who locks you in your room at eight. Then there's Mr. House, who seeks to maintain his grip over New Vegas through technological superiority and strategic alliances. His obsession with control and vision for a utopian future highlight the human desire for immortality and legacy, showing the lengths one will go to secure their vision. You could say he's the ultimate micromanager who won't stop until he's automated your entire life. As the courier, your journey is one of discovery and influence. You navigate these power structures, make alliances, and ultimately decide the fate of the Mojave. Your choices reflect the ongoing tension between the desire for freedom and the need for control, challenging you to consider the broader implications of your actions and the psychological impact of wielding such power. Plus, who doesn't love the thrill of deciding whether to be the Wasteland's hero or its biggest troublemaker? Also, I might have uh, sort of plowed his daughter. A little. Thanks. But if Bishop finds me and I don't have his money, my balls are going to be on his trophy wall. Power dynamics are a central theme in New Vegas. The Hoover Dam isn't just a big concrete wall. It's the ultimate prize in a high-stakes game of chess. The NCR wants it for its strategic value, the Legion for its potential to dominate, and Mr. House because, well, he wants everything. It's like the last slice of pizza at a party everyone's fighting for and no one's willing to fucking share. The NCR sees the dam as a critical asset for expanding their territory and influence. Their goal is to bring the Mojave under their governance, establishing law and order at the cost of local autonomy. Psychologically, 
The NCR's actions reflect the classic expansionist mindset, driven by a desire to impose order and control on chaos. Caesar's Legion views Hoover Dam as the key to their domination of the West. Their approach is one of conquest and subjugation, seeking to impose their rigid structure on the chaotic wasteland. It's like they're playing Risk, but with real people and terrifying consequences. The Legion's brutal efficiency contrasts sharply with the NCR's bureaucratic approach, offering a stark choice between different forms of governance. Mr. House, the enigmatic ruler of New Vegas, seeks to control the dam to ensure his vision of a prosperous and technologically advanced city. His strategy involves leveraging advanced technology and strategic alliances to maintain dominance. Imagine a tech billionaire trying to run for president, except Mr. House is a bit more ruthless and a lot less human. I spent two centuries searching for the platinum chip. It's my invention, my property, mine! Now be a good courier and deliver it. As the courier, your involvement in the Battle of Hoover Dam is crucial. Your choices can tip the balance of power, determining which faction will prevail. This battle is not just a physical confrontation, but a clash of ideologies, each representing different aspects of power and control. The outcome of this conflict shapes the future of the Mojave. Hi! Nice to see you again! making your role as a courier a pivotal force in the game's narrative. And, let's face it, who doesn't love the thrill of being the deciding factor in a massive power struggle? It's like being the tie-breaking vote on a reality show, but with more explosions. Survival in the Mojave is no picnic. Every corner of New Vegas presents a new challenge, whether it's raiders, radiation, or just finding a decent meal. But it's also a nod to human resilience. Take the Boomers, for example. They've turned an old Air Force base into a fortress, showcasing the power of determination and some serious firepower. I mean, who needs neighbors when you've got artillery? Good Springs, for instance, is a small, tight-knit community that relies on mutual aid and cooperation. The townsfolk band together to defend their home from threats, showcasing the power of community resilience. Novak, a settlement built around a repurposed motel, highlights the importance of resourcefulness. The iconic Dinky the Dinosaur statue serves as a sniper's nest, providing both protection and a vantage point. The residents of Novak have turned their limited resources into strengths, demonstrating that survival often requires creative solutions. It's like turning a roadside motel into a fortress, complete with a giant dinosaur for added flair. HGTV would be proud. God damn it. Don't sneak up on me like that. What do you want? I think you better leave. I don't have friends here. No. No, you're not, are you? Maybe you shouldn't go. Not just yet. I need someone I can trust. You're a stranger. That's a start. I want you to find something out for me. I don't know if there's anything to find, but I need someone to try. My wife was taken from our home by Legion slavers one night while I was on watch. They knew when to come, what route to take, and they only took Carla. Someone set it up. I don't know who. My wife's dead. I want the son of a bitch who sold her. Bring him out in front of the nest here while I'm on duty. I work nights. I'll give you my NCR beret to put on. It'll be our signal so I know you're standing with him. And I'll take care of the rest. I need to do this myself. We haven't met yet. You must...
As long as we don't go out too far, Ginny Mae would have a fit if she saw me out and about. That's it then. How did you know? You sick bastard. You better be ready to join him. The Boomers, isolated at Nellis Air Force Base, have created a self-sufficient community through their expertise in explosives and military tactics. Their isolationist approach ensures their safety, but also limits their interactions with the outside world. The Boomer story underscores the theme of self-reliance and the trade-offs involved in choosing isolation for security. It's like living off the grid, but with an air force ready to back you up. The followers of the apocalypse, based in Freeside, focus on providing medical aid and education to the wasteland's inhabitants. Their mission reflects the belief that knowledge and compassion are essential for long-term survival. The followers' work in the chaotic environment of Freeside highlights the importance of self-sacrifice and the impact of humanitarian efforts in rebuilding society. They're basically the Red Cross of the Wasteland, but with cooler outfits. Fallout New Vegas reminds us that survival is about more than just getting by. It's about adapting, finding new ways to thrive, and sometimes making tough choices. It's a lesson that's incredibly relevant today as we navigate our own global challenges. And who doesn't love a good underdog story? It's like rooting for the scrappy kid in a schoolyard fight, except with more mutants and radiation. New Vegas excels at presenting morally ambiguous situations that challenge our perceptions of right and wrong. Take the quest Beyond the Beef, where you uncover a dark secret within the Ultra Lux Casino. Do you expose the truth and risk chaos, or do you cover it up for the greater good? These dilemmas force you to weigh the consequences of your actions carefully. It's like deciding whether to tell your friend their haircut is terrible, except with cannibalism. Why are you standing still? Do you think the world waits for you while you stand there drooling? Get back out there and get to work. Who do... Who the fuck do you think I am? I'm the fucking god of New Vegas Brahmin Fusion Cuisine, that's who. No, no, that doesn't even give me the credit I deserve. I fucking invented edible food. Do you like eating? Good. You owe me your entire goddamn garbage existence. Oh, really? So despite your filthy face and your vacant expression and your complete lack of human dignity, you're telling me you're not a server? What, me? The supreme ruler of the Nevada dining scene? Teach some low-life halfwits how to make food that doesn't smell like burning excrement? Do you think it would sell? You're pushing your luck. Here, I have a few copies on me. This better be good enough. We're gonna have a real problem if this thing isn't a hit. What kind of harebrained fucking psychobabble bullshit is that? I yell at people because I like yelling at people and because they fucking deserve it. Not because Mumsy and Daddykins didn't hug me enough. Oh, I see how it is. You think because my father walked out on us when I was five, now I have to yell at people. Or because my mother was a deranged chem fiend who regularly brought strange men home who told me to call them uncle. Or because my sisters would lock me in a shipping crate when they didn't want me around. And my brother... God, I'd forgotten about that. How could they do that to me? I can't stay here. I need to be alone. Forget about the fucking banquet. You know what? You can do it. You be the star chef. Take my recipes. It won't fill the hole, though. Just remember that. You'll always feel empty. What in the Sam hell? Eat me? 
What kind of sick bastards would eat a person? I'll tell you what, as soon as I'm out of here, and my daddy knows the story, you can bet there ain't gonna be no white hat society no more. And come fly with me. You help a group of ghouls achieve their dream of reaching space. It's a quest that touches on themes of hope and redemption, but also raises questions about the ethics of sacrifice and the pursuit of dreams at any cost. Each quest in New Vegas is a microcosm of larger ethical questions, reflecting the complex nature of mortality in our own lives. The game's factions also present moral challenges. Supporting the NCR means endorsing a flawed system that can bring stability, but at the cost of individual freedoms. Siding with Caesar's Legion means embracing a brutal regime that offers order through fear. Even the decision to support Mr. House or go it alone as an independent courier presents a nuanced ethical landscape where there are no easy answers. It's like picking your favorite ice cream flavor when they're all laced with questionable ingredients. New Vegas forces us to confront these moral complexities head on, reminding us that life is rarely black and white. It encourages us to think critically about our values and the impact of our actions on others. And let's be honest, sometimes it's nice to play a game that makes you think as much as it entertains. After all, who doesn't love a bit of a mental gymnastics with their post-apocalyptic adventure? The impact of war is a recurring theme in New Vegas. The game's world is shaped by the remnants of the Great War, and its scars are everywhere. From the crumbling highways to the irradiated craters, the aftermath of conflict is a constant presence. But amidst this destruction, there are signs of hope and rebuilding. Communities like Good Springs and Novak have found ways to rebuild and thrive, turning the remnants of the old world into new opportunities. These stories of resilience and recovery are powerful reminders that even in the aftermath of catastrophe, life finds a way to continue. It's like turning a post-apocalyptic lemon into a wasteland lemonade stand. The war's impact on individual characters is also profound. Many NPCs carry the psychological scars of the past, influencing their actions and decisions. Characters like Boone, who struggles with the loss of his wife, and R.K. Gannon, who grapples with his enclave heritage, offer deep, personal narratives that reflect the broader themes of loss and redemption. It's like watching a soap opera, but with more guns and ghouls. New Vegas doesn't shy away from showing the brutal reality of war, but it also highlights the resilience of the human spirit. Even in the darkest times, people find ways to move forward and rebuild. It's a powerful reminder of the importance of hope, community, and the strength to overcome adversity. Because let's face it, if the folks in the Mojave can do it, we can handle a little bit of everyday drama. Now, let's talk about some of the standout story arcs in New Vegas. We've got the Battle of Hoover Dam, which is the game's climax and a turning point for the entire region. This epic confrontation brings together all of the game's major factions and forces you to make decisions that will shape the region's destiny. It's like the Super Bowl of the Mojave, but with more laser rifles and less halftime entertainment. The House Always Wins is another key quest line. Whether you work with or against Mr. House to secure his vision for New Vegas, this series of missions delves into the themes of technological control and legacy, making you question the cost of progress and the true meaning of a utopia. 
It's like partnering with a tech mogul who just won't take no for an answer. I am Robert Edwin House, President, CEO, and sole proprietor of the new Vegas Strip. I oversaw the city's renovations starting from 2274 onward. The three families are my employees. Before the Great War of 2077, I was the founder, president, and CEO of Robco Industries, a vast computer and robotics corporation. My Kind of Town takes you to the struggling settlement of Prim, where you decide the fate of the town's leadership. Should you help the NCR install a new sheriff? Back the rebellious NCRCF convicts, or even put a robot in charge. This quest highlights the complexities of governance and the impact of leadership decisions on the community. Think of it as playing a post-apocalyptic game of SimCity, but with more bandits. Still in the Dark delves into the secretive Brotherhood of Steel in this quest you navigate the faction's internal politics and help them reclaim lost technology. It's a deep dive into the Brotherhood's rigid hierarchy and their struggle to adapt to a changing world. Think of it as joining a high-tech treasure hunt with a bunch of tech-hoarding introverts who still live in their parents' basement, but with power armor. Now why would I do that? You see some powder gangers on the approach or something? You've seen that with your own two eyes? God damn. I knew Cook's gang passed through these parts about that frequently, but I didn't know they hold up here. Be a rude awakening to find 15 of those merciless bastards looking down at me snoozing on my bedroll. Yep, I'd be better off setting up an ambush along one of their routes to catch stragglers. Thanks for the information. You may have saved my life. These key moments aren't just entertaining. They're rich narratives that explore complex themes like loyalty, ambition, and redemption. They add depth to the game world and make it feel alive. Each quest is a piece of a larger puzzle, contributing to the overarching story of the Mojave. It's like binge watching your favorite show, but you get to be the star of the action. Fallout New Vegas is filled with memorable characters, each with their own stories and motivations. Let's start with The Courier, our protagonist. What's fascinating about The Courier is that they are a blank slate, allowing players to project their own values and decisions onto them. This flexibility makes The Courier's journey deeply personal and unique to each player reflecting their values and decisions. Mr. House is a visionary who seeks to transform New Vegas into a utopia through technological advancement. His intelligence and foresight are impressive, but his methods and obsessive control raise questions about the cost of progress and the ethics of absolute power. He embodies the theme of technological superiority versus human freedom. Kaisar, the leader of the Legion, is a complex character driven by a mix of idealism and brutality. He believes that only through strict discipline and authoritarian rule can society be restored. His character challenges us to consider the price of order and whether the ends justify the means. Kaiser's background as a former follower of the Apocalypse adds depth to his motivations and ideals. Boone, a former NCR sniper, carries the weight of a tragic past. His quest for redemption and justice makes him one of the most compelling companions. Boone's personal story highlights the human cost of war and the struggle to find meaning and forgiveness in a shattered world. Arcade Ganon, a member of the Followers of the Apocalypse, grapples with his heritage as the son of an Enclave officer. His internal conflict 
and desire to help others make him a symbol of redemption and the possibility of change. Arcade's story reflects the broader theme of reconciling with the past while striving to build a better future. Then, then there's Benny, a smooth-talking, checkered suit-wearing snake who steals your platinum chip and leaves you for fucking dead. Honestly, dealing with Benny is like you're trying to negotiate with the used car salesman who also moonlights as a mobster. What in the goddamn? Let's keep this in the groove, hey? Smooth moves like smooth little babies. Over here! You never know if he's gonna sell you a lemon or have you buried in the desert. Other memorable characters, like Veronica, a scribe of the Brotherhood of Steel who questions her faction's rigid doctrines, and Yes Man, the ever-optimistic AI who symbolizes the potential for new beginnings. Add layers of complexity and richness to the narrative. Each character in New Vegas is a piece of the larger puzzle, contributing to the game's depth and immersive storytelling. Since its release, Fallout New Vegas has left an undeniable mark on the gaming community. It's rich narrative, complex characters, glitches, <laughs> and moral depth have set a high standard for storytelling. In video games, New Vegas has inspired countless fan creations, from mods that expand and enhance the game to fan art that captures the spirit of the Mojave. The modding community has kept New Vegas alive, continuously adding new content, improving graphics, and even creating entirely new storylines. Mods like The Frontier and Project Nevada showcase the creativity and dedication of the fan base, breathing new life into the game and allowing players to experience the Mojave in fresh and exciting ways. It's like giving the game a never-ending DLC pack, but with more wild ideas and, and, fewer microtransactions. The discussions and analyses within the gaming community reflect the game's impact. Fans debate the ethical dilemmas, explore different narrative paths, and share their unique experiences. New Vegas has become a touchstone for meaningful storytelling and player agency in open world games. It's like the book club you've always wanted to join, but with more plasma rifles and rad scorpions. The game's influence extends beyond the Fallout series, inspiring other RPGs to incorporate complex narratives and moral ambiguity. It's a testament to the power of video games as a medium for exploring profound themes and fostering deep connections among players. If New Vegas were a person, it would be the wise elder everyone turns to for advice, with a pit boy on one wrist and a shotgun on the other. Now, a fun fact for you guys. Did you guys know that Caesar's Legion wouldn't be the formidable force it is without the unwavering support of its members? Caesar may have the vision, but it's the loyalty and dedication of his followers that build his empire. Similarly, Mr. House's grand plans for New Vegas would be nothing without his Securitrons and people who maintain his vision. Just like Caesar and Mr. House, I need your support to keep this channel thriving. Every like, comment, and subscription fuels my passion to bring you more deep dives and exciting content. So if you're enjoying this video, smash that like button and drop a comment with your thoughts or any ideas for future videos. Your support means the world to me and keeps this community strong. Now let's get back to why Fallout New Vegas is the best game in the series. selling anything, neighbor. I'm giving away the secrets of long life, happiness, and prosperity. Giving them away. What do you say? Ready to take that first step into a new life? Now, 
Let's have some fun and compare New Vegas with its siblings, Fallout 3 and Fallout 4. Because what's a family without a little friendly rivalry, right? In Fallout 3, you emerge from Vault 101 into a desolate DC, Wasteland. Sure, you get to decide if you want to blow up Megaton or not, but let's be real. Your choices are more limited than a Nuka-Cola vending machine after a raider party. Fallout 4 gives you the commonwealth, and yeah, building settlements is definitely cool. It really is. I love it. It's great. But beyond that, your dialogue choices. They're like picking between yes, sarcastic yes, maybe yes, and no, but actually yes. New Vegas, on the other hand, lets you craft your own path with deep, meaningful choices. You can become a warlord, a peacekeeper, or just spend your fucking days gambling at the tops and messing with Benny. In New Vegas, you decide the fate of the Mojave. You. You want to ally with the Brotherhood of Steel? Go right ahead. Fancy teaming up with the Great Cons? Be my guest. Or maybe you just want to go solo and tell everyone else to go take a frickin' hike. The freedom and depth of your choices make you feel like you're writing your own story, not just following a script. It's like being the director of your own post-apocalyptic soap opera, but with more dynamite and fewer commercials. And let's not forget the humor and quirks. Where else can you find a robot cowboy with an existential crisis or a ghoul who thinks he's a pre-war movie star? Fallout 4's Preston Garvey might keep telling you about another settlement that needs your help, but in New Vegas, you're the one deciding who needs help. And who needs a plasma bolt to the face? So, while Fallout 3 and 4 have their merits, New Vegas stands out for its intricate storytelling, complex characters, and unparalleled freedom of choice. It's like comparing a fine vintage sunset sarsaparilla to a flat lukewarm Nuka-Cola. Both will quench your thirst, but only one will leave you craving more. Now, before we wrap this up, let me make one thing clear. I'm not hating on Fallout 3 or Fallout 4. Fallout 3 was my first love. It opened the door for me to the Fallout universe. It's like that first crush you never forget. In Fallout 4, I adore it for its crafting and realism. The settlement building is like my personal version of a post-apocalyptic Minecraft. But when it comes to what I consider to be the essence of Fallout, the true top line experience, nothing beats New Vegas. Even if the gunplay isn't on Fallout 4's level, I just can't escape it. It's been a 14 year relationship with me with this game, and let's just say New Vegas and I have had our ups and downs. It's kind of like a relationship where you argue about who left the death claw out in the yard, but always make up because deep down you know you're perfect for each other. For me, New Vegas isn't just a game. It's a profound experience that challenges and inspires. It's a reminder that even in the darkest times, we have the power to make a difference. What's your biggest takeaway from New Vegas? Let me know in the comments below. Let's get the conversation going because I believe we can learn a lot from each other's experiences. And if you've enjoyed this video, be sure to check out my Soul Survivor video where I get very personal about the tragedies in my own life and how Fallout has been a source of solace and strength. It's a story I think many of you will connect with on a deeper level. I will put it in the end screen. And hey, while you're at it, why not share this video with a fellow Wastelander? Let's spread the love for New Vegas and keep this incredible community thriving. Until next time, stay safe out there in the Wasteland. Corn out. <laughs>